The other point I was going to make here is that it isn't just in like retail or music or all those things. You know, it's all the creative industries too. 99 Designs, a classic, and there are many like it. I've used 99 Designs on three or four occasions. You know, you put up a figure, $500 online, you want to design something or you want to do some graphics, um, you pitch for it, you give a short term, three or four days. I think we had 50 people from 30 countries around the world bid for it. Picked one of them, they did the job, the whole thing was done instantly online. And what you get is a far better result. You're not doing it to say the, the Bernie Brooks's of the world and Jerry Harvey's have completely missed the plot. This has got nothing to do with GST. I mean, if their business is failing because of 10%, they've got a problem. Their business is failing because of a lack of service. Because when I go online, I buy this shirt comes from England. Right? I, I don't buy it because I have to buy a shirt. It's actually a more expensive shirt. Charles Trewick. But he knows more about me than anyone any Bernie Brooks could employ. When I walk into Myers every time, I'm a new customer. When I go online to Charles Trewitt, he knows me, he knows my shirt size, he knows my preferences, he knows what I like, what I don't like, and he also knows when to tell me that he has got specials online. How are schools reacting in this environment? What is the new normal in our schools? Is it about time that we started reimagining what school could be? And then we've got to think of schooling in an age of ambiguity, ambiguity, Ambiguity and uncertainty. And this is, this is a bit threatening. This is a little bit, we don't know what's going to be happening. You all saw the, the UNESCO um, OECD stuff from, uh, that came out a few years ago about the shift in the sort of skill sets that we need in, in the workforce. And this is where we're seeing it happen. That we do know that the demand in our workforce is for more creative, uh, strategic thinkers um, in the developed worlds than it has been in the past. And we have an enormous problem because unfortunately, we are still very much thinking of educating young people for some of those jobs that don't exist today. It is, it is a problem for us. We have a lot of skilled people. I might say, you know, I know personally a number of people in this country, this isn't a problem in America or, it's sure, it's a huge problem in Spain and Europe for all sorts of reasons. In Australia, this is a problem. Speaking to my accountant last week, a mid-sized accountant in Port Melbourne said he was looking for a new accountant, put an add-on seat, of course he wouldn't put it in the classifieds, had a thousand applications. One thousand applications from people who had an accounting degree and couldn't get a job. At the moment, as you can see there, the, those companies alone have 10,000 current openings in the United States. Some of those companies, just go to Mika's report, look at those companies Mika's got up there, go to the websites of those companies, and have a look at the job openings. Thousands. I mean, I picked one of them up out of the blue. I think it's this one, isn't it? Yeah, it is, Big Commerce. This, by the way, is actually based, founded as like a, a lot of these companies now, they don't have a firm geo. It's based out of Sydney. It's got a link, I think, in California and three other countries. It's an Australian company. And I think I looked at, I think they had 40 job openings. Um, I hope, I hope their job openings for young people with the skills um, that we're developing in our schools. That were the job openings that they had there. You look at that list of the sort of, you know, people that they're looking for, and, you know, they're, they're across all sectors. And keeping about this context of our schools today, this is schooling now in an age of autonomy and personal networks. Because the culture of work has shifted dramatically. It's not just about the fact that retail's moved online. It's not just about the fact that we're seeing technology across the way that our businesses function. It's not just the fact that, for instance, in banking, which once upon a time was looked upon as the most conservative industry, whereas now we don't go to the banks for cash, and in fact, we're not even really using cash anymore, which was the major motion of the way in which we use banks. That's not even happening. So schooling in an age of autonomy is more about a uh, lovely book, by the way, and a whole lot of stuff online um, called Nomads. I quite like the name. It, it, it's a bit funky, it's a bit faddish, but I like the idea of you know, workers who aren't geographically linked or anchored inside a company. I was at a, actually at the Byron Writers Festival last weekend, I've got to tell you. And um, a young girl opposite me uh, was educated at Shepparton High School, then Shepparton. Um, she, she should be awfully proud of what this young lady's done. She's 30 years of age. She is a nomad. She's a highly talented computer science graduate um, from uh, Monash uh, who's gone on working with a company, I'll tell you actually, uh, uh, called Odyssey, 
in Melbourne, ODECEE. -E. Have a look at that company. Have a look at what the work that they're doing and how they're connecting the work on the internet to the way that the big, they're working with banks all around Australia, linking together transactions and getting histories about you know, what people are doing and help them be better informed about decisions they're making. Nothing that Odyssey does today has anything to do with what the companies they're working with were doing five years ago. Five years ago. She said to me, the problem I've got is young people, she is a 31-year-old 30, uh, or something saying, she said to me, young people come in the company and they expect me to tell them what to do because they're used to having teachers tell them how to behave and look after themselves and manage them. She said, that's not the culture of a modern contemporary work organisation because today we work where, when and how we want to. We don't clock on and off like the lesson bell's going. Young people are expected to have responsibility, to have tasks, to be able to use the technology to monitor their progress so that they can share transparently what they're doing to be able to work in teams collaboratively. You know all those 21st century things. Now it's not 21st century things just because it's cute to say. That's the modern work culture. And our schools have to understand this. We don't. We don't understand this. We're still treating people like they're going to go in the nine to five environment. That's not the modern work environment by any means. As uh, Down says, Down's a Canadian, you know, we have to stop thinking about education as something delivered to us, but rather something we create for ourselves. I'm often uh, a little bit um, concerned about this notion about us always looking to professionally develop our peers. It's, you know, it's about us developing our own, being responsible for our own education. If we're talking about autonomous self-directed learners for students, surely that's what we want for our peers in the profession. <coughs> And so we have a range of organisations. We have talent clouds, we have e-lancers. We have essentially these amplified organisations that no longer have a room, an office, a series of people sitting at desks, assuming that's the entity. The structures of these businesses are very, very different to what they've been in the past. And they're connecting to other people for short-term contracts. They're building in other places. They're collaborating virtually. In many of these countries, if you look online, a lot of these companies have sites and you, or you can talk with people and they'll say, I've never met the people in other places. We hired them virtually, we did online. You know, there, there are now, there's open source software to allow you to do the seeking, the recruiting, the hiring, the management, um, the reporting. It isn't a cost, it isn't a lack of, of thinking. The, the technologies are all there to make it happen. And how does that distill down into what might happen inside um, inside our schools, and this notion of collective curation, whereby all of a sudden we can share our ideas, and this is, you know, an evolution of some of the things we see on your trip advisors and, and Amazons and whatever else, but this idea that came out of the developer website, Stack Overflow, which is Math Overflow or the physics one, uh, you know, or the physics sites, allows people to collect knowledge and share answers very promptly, very quickly, in ways they couldn't do before as this person scribbled up here. Another notion, if you're not doing something wrong, um, then you're not do if you're not producing something wrong, you're not doing anything original. This notion of agility and iteration. It's the culture, it's the context in which our schools are functioning. And outside our schools, companies like, uh, like this one are just an example of the sorts of things that uh, we see. In Valve, which is an on, one of the largest online and gaming organisations, nobody's ever been fired at Valve for making a mistake. It wouldn't make sense for us to operate that way. Providing the freedom to fail is an important trait of the company. We couldn't expect so much of individuals if we penalised people for errors. Companies are no longer having long development cycles. They're no longer investing over a five to ten year span. They might be if they're large mining companies, but the companies that I've been talking about are doing it in very short cycles. They're remixing ideas. They're thinking more dynamically about, they're more agile in the way they're responding to the company, to needs in business. And at the same time, we've also got to be aware of the context of our schools functioning in an age of complexity and big data. And I'll just make brief mention on this because we are running a little bit touch on time. 